Okay, so we're in a motorhome, so we're probably going to be talking about projects. And even though it's a relatively uh, nice sunny day here, we're going to talk about sealants, and specifically sealing things up on your roof. Um, again, something I have a pretty considerable amount of experience in. Uh, if you look at modern buildings today, they're primarily made up of steel, and glass, and concrete, and wherever dissimilar materials like that come together, they have to be sealed. So in using sealants on my motorhome, I didn't go to Camping World and grab some of that Dacor stuff. To me, that's kind of like the Home Depot or, or Lowe's type of uh, uh, quality. It works, but it certainly isn't the most ideal. And because sealants are so important to the building technology world, you can really, really get some absolutely stellar uh, sealants out there. So um, without further ado, um, the one that I use primarily, it's made by Sika. Uh, BASF makes some sealants as well, but at least in my experience, I've always had really good luck with this. Um, it's called Sika Flex, and this is a 1A. Uh, they make a self-leveling SL, so which is also Sika Flex, except it's an SL. Uh, available on Amazon, believe it or not, like everything else. Um, in terms of full disclosure, I do have a son that works for him. He's a pretty amazing kid, um, pretty amazing company to work for. Really uh, uh, highly recommend Amazon.com for just about anything. Um, this stuff is basically made to last decades, 10, 15, 20 years on the side of a building with ultraviolet light beating down on it and all of that sort of stuff. Um, it doesn't dry out like the Dacor stuff. I peeled a whole bunch of it off the roof of this vehicle and uh, you know replaced all of it. Um, you're going to want to have some of the tools that I am going to show you. I think they're invaluable uh, you, you know, tools to have around a motorhome. Uh, they're again not expensive. None of this stuff is, in, you know, this is a you know five or six dollar tube of caulking, but you know it it, it really is a uh, a significant uh, you know improvement over anything else you're going to get, and that stuff isn't cheap either. Um, I took a bunch of pictures. Again, what I like to do with projects and whatnot is give you an overview, uh, set you up with the right tools, concepts, that sort of thing, and you know. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, just you know, let me know. Um, really good caulking gun is uh, you, you know pretty important. Those little stamp steel ones from uh, Home Depot are, are not going to do it. This is uh, an Albion, um, you know, really nice, professional. Again, you get it right off of uh, Amazon. This is a uh, you know the small tube style, common to everything you've probably ever used. It's a model number B12, Albion B12. I'll put a link to some of this stuff uh, down below, but uh, let's get into, uh, you know, getting some caulking up there, scraping some of that old crap off, and uh, get right into it. So, stand by. Okay, this is a site I'm sure a lot of people are pretty well aware of up on the roof of their motorhome. Uh, this is the vent. Mine snapped off like many people's. The plastic dries out and gets uh, UV damage and gets very brittle and off it went. But you can see around this it's just been piled up with self-leveling sealant probably four or five times. And uh, you know job one is to uh, get that off. I ordered the caps off of uh, Amazon.com of course and uh, I think they were like three, four, five dollars a piece. Um, with uh, my Prime, they were uh, free shipping. I got them in two days, so that was really nice. You want to, uh, you know, get right into uh, getting ready to peel these off, chisel. Um, personally, I, I find a screwdriver, a big screwdriver works really well to get that particular style of caulking off. And, uh, you know, you just start off on the uh, fixture or the, the flange itself. Get as much of it, uh, you know, peeled back as you can, and uh, work your way around. It's it's not fun. It's kind of time-consuming. This stuff dries out and gets brittle, and you kind of gotta 
almost chip it off and uh, uh, again not uh, you know a particularly fun or rewarding job but it is what it is okay now time for a bit of a rant here um, it's so funny how these are exterior components that are bolted on I believe it or not they do this very same thing in boats but for whatever reason instead of using stainless steel resistive to rust and weathering type fasteners everybody always wants to use these cheap you know bogus regular metal screws and they rust uh, galvanizing and all of that sort of stuff just doesn't cut it when you go to replace anything I have been on a mission going all the way around my entire motorhome basically pulling all the screws out that look like this and replacing them basically pulling all of the screws out everywhere I can find a screw and replacing them with some form of stainless steel screw um, it just it makes absolutely no sense to me do not reuse any of the fasteners that you uh, you know pull out find a good solid equivalent in stainless steel I try to get an American made brand and it just it, it just common sense get it all peeled up it'll look like this it's not fun um, you gotta scrape and peel and pull and takes a couple of different types of uh, tools and whatnot but like I said a, a basic screwdriver gives me a, a pretty good amount of uh, a narrow uh, bit you know to uh, uh, not try to take up too much at a time and then just keep going back and forth and scraping it up and you can pull up pretty good sized chunks with it um, it just takes a little getting used to you'll see what I mean if you try to do this with something broad bladed or something like that you just you, you kind of get nowhere because you know again it's it's pretty hard and brittle and not very fun to get after Okay, so the last step, at least insofar as scraping is concerned, is I use a gasket scraper, automotive gasket scraper. Um, somebody I worked with, uh, you know, always had one of these in his bag, and uh, I uh, found it to be a, a, a pretty invaluable tool. You want to be careful, especially if you've got any sort of fabric up there. This is probably not the tool you're going to want to use, but mine is fiberglass. And even that, be careful so you don't scratch the gel coat and damage it. Because, uh, again, you're not going to go nearly as wide as this stuff was laid on. But you can be careful and, uh, you know, pull it up, scrape it up, get that last, you know, as much of the residue off as you can. Um, it's not all that difficult at this point. You've pretty much got most of the hard work out of the way. Okay. Scraping's all done. Last thing. Pretty basic. Um... There are a number of solvents that you can use. I like mineral spirits, but you can use methyl ethyl ketone, uh, MEK it's called. Uh, they have that at Home Depot and whatnot. But, you know, any, any mineral spirits will uh, do a pretty decent job of getting that last little bit of residue up. You're going to raise the blade a little bit. You're going to, um, with a, a paper towel and the uh, mineral spirits, wiping, maybe a little bit with a sponge and some... Um, scotch bright test fit you know get your uh, new fitting up there make sure it lines up you don't have to go with the original holes I didn't I forced some caulking down into them that way there I was assured that the screws would uh, you know get a good bite into the new hole um, get it lined up get it sized up uh, I then take the caulking put it right around the bottom of the flange and stick the flange right down if it's they fit nice and tightly over that uh, uh, pipe the way that they're designed they they you know you got to force them down over that pipe um, line it all up and then lastly I get a good amount of the caulking onto the tip of the screw notice of course that it's a nice stainless steel um, and it's a 316 stainless steel screw um, that way there I don't have to go back afterwards and you know worry about anything rusting or whatnot like that but that amount of caulking right there will glue that screw in place and you can even do that if you have holes um, you know that aren't that are slightly oversized and you know whatnot like that take the screw put that sealant on it like I said Sikaflex 1A S-I-K-A and screw that screw down in there let it dry 
and that screw is in there and it is not going to come out of its own volition. This is a set of tools that I use. You're not going to need all of these, mainly that you know small array uh, more towards the, the middle right there. Um, I'll put a link down below, but we call these slickers. And uh, if your wife or you're a, a woman or you make cakes, um, you'll kind of think, boy, they look an awful lot like frosting tools. And fundamentally they are. They are very similar, probably made by the same people that make the frosting tools. But uh, Albion, again, like the caulking gun, is, is, is a very common supplier for these. Um, you can get a nice little set on a ring for about 15, 20 bucks. They're all stainless steel. And this is what you're going to use to form that really nice sealed bead. It's not just a question of putting it down really neat and all that sort of stuff. We don't put caulking down neat. We put an over amount onto the actual uh, things that we're caulking. And then we use these to scrape a little bit of it off and then to tool it down and make that nice round, you know, semi-round concave bead. And it looks pretty much just like this when you're done. Now, again, I work with some people that just make that stuff look absolutely perfect. And, uh, you know, if you really work at it, you, you, you can get really pretty good at it. Um, I'm pretty good at it, but not anything exceptional. Uh, Barry, if you're watching, you know, you'll laugh, but... You know, basically, this is what you want it to look like. That is a slicked down, sealed up, um, you know, fitting in between these two components. And once that stuff dries, that's it. There's the caulking underneath it for a seal, and then that around the lip of it. And the last thing that we're going to do is on those screw heads, all that you do is take the caulking gun and just put a little dollop on there and then curl that right around with the um, with, with the slicker so that it looks something like that. Again, doesn't have to be super, super neat. Make it look as neat as you feel you want it to look, and that's pretty much it. Pop that cap on, and you are done. And it's like I said, now I don't have, you can see in this picture, all the way out to the edge there, how far, an inch and a half outside that flange. And being way out there, that, that doesn't help the seal any. The seal is made right where the two surfaces meet. And it can be the surface of the plastic cap and the fiberglass roof, or it can be an air conditioner flange, any number of different things. We're going to get into in the next little bit here where I went and did the skylight above my shower. Uh, it had also had, uh, you know, a slight leak. And, you know, this is what it should look like. And this right here is a building sealant that is pretty much going to be guaranteed to last 15 years. I will never touch this thing again unless I have to replace that plastic. Okay, so here's the uh, Cicaflex. This is just a quick picture of the stuff that I use. comes in all sorts of different colors. Um, you know, I use the gray up above and in the pictures that you see here. Um, you can get an off-white. I just had some of the gray, so that's what I used. I've used the black up on some of the areas around my windows. Um, you know, again, like I said, it comes in a whole uh, array of colors. Um, not an infinite number of colors to match all of the different stuff in a motorhome, but a fair amount you can get pretty close, that's for sure. Um, primarily the off-whites and uh, grays and blacks are, are where you're probably going to end up, but... This stuff is really, really, once it's up there, it's done. Remember that. Okay, so as far as projects go, keeping things dry is a pretty important project and uh, one we all seem to have to deal with at one point or another. I really, really like those particular types of products. I, I, I encourage you, um, when you get a chance, Get up there, scrape some of that decor off, pick that vent up, refrigerator vent cover. They always need to be replaced. You get in there and do your air conditioner or anything like that. When you stick that thing down, get yourself some Cicaflex and you're done. Um, no more leaks, no more penetrations, and very, very, very long life. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, 
by all means, reach out, drop me a comment, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Um, please take a moment and subscribe. Going to try to uh, keep some helpful videos going. And um, best of luck to everybody. Thank you if you did subscribe. We'll see you soon.